In the last video series, I was talking about how you can use API Gateway to create a books API using Lambda functions connected to DynamoDB. And I was like, yeah, this is great. This is how a lot of people get started, but there's a better way. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the better way, specifically using AWS AppSync. Now I hear you, Michael, you're on the AppSync team at AWS. Maybe you're a little bit biased. Hear me out. There's a specific reason why I love AppSync. And in particular, let's look at this architecture diagram to talk about exactly why that is. Okay, so what we have here is a user talking to a Next.js application connected to AWS Amplify libraries. And on the top is where we get different. We're gonna be talking about AWS AppSync connecting straight to DynamoDB. Now, I wanna be fair here. API Gateway has the ability to talk to DynamoDB directly, but it uses a language called VTL. AppSync has the ability to talk to DynamoDB using JavaScript. We're gonna be talking about how do you get your project set up? How do you lay things out so that way you're best set up for success? Now we're gonna be going through the full deployment pipeline here, folks. So stay tuned. If you don't know what GraphQL or AppSync is, maybe check out the video listed right here just to get your bearings on what we're gonna be going through. If you uh, wanna stay tuned on other videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified of when each video in this series comes out. It's gonna be a good time, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is a full stack app, right? So we know that we're going to need Next.js right here. So I'm gonna say at latest, and then we'll just use something like our pets API. Okay, so there you can see the Next.js version. We're gonna say yes to pretty much everything here. We are gonna be using TypeScript, Tailwind, of course, source directory. Now we're gonna bypass that. I just accepted all of the defaults while this is installing. Pretty simple stuff, but we are going to create a new directory, a new backend directory. And that's where all of our CDK code is going to be. So let's go ahead and take this. We'll CD or rather make directory called backend. And then instead of here, we'll go ahead and get the CDK installed, making sure that I am on the latest version. I'm going to say init. The language, of course, is going to be TypeScript. I'm actually going to redo this real quick because I realized that I'm not in the backend directory. So same thing, just in that directory. All right, I got that taken care of. CDK version 2.99.1, folks, is what we're going to be running with today. And just like that, we have this project scaffolded out for us. I'm gonna open this up in VS Code. I'll meet you there. Okay, so here's our full stack project with our app directory. As you can see right in here, this is all that Next.js goodness. We're gonna be in this backend directory for this tutorial, but I'm gonna bump this up just so you can see it here. And if you've seen my other CDK videos, you know how I like to scaffold out these projects. I don't like to use classes, so we know that we're gonna be using a DynamoDB table. And we also have AppSync in the mix. So I'm gonna start with that table because that's one of the easiest things to create in the CDK. And we have this pets table. Let's give ourselves some space here just so we can read all of that. Pull this out. Okay, so we have this here. And if I pull up this pets table, let's see what this looks like. We have our table here. We're just creating the table. I'm gonna give ourselves some room. And we have a simple ID. The ID is pretty much taking care of grabbing the items from our database. And this is how you wanna do things if you're working strictly with a API, something like from API Gateway. But in our case, I'm gonna switch this. I'm gonna say the name is gonna be underscore type name. And this is gonna be what we're querying all of our things on. That's not very useful on its own. So what we're also going to say is something like, hey, give me all of the pets that are in this database called pet, but then specifically give me the pets with the name of ID. There we go. And then we have the type, it's a string, code whisper doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us here. And I think this is all good. So this is our actual DynamoDB table, right? Nothing too crazy, but now I'm in a pretty good spot to go ahead and evoke this over in our backend stack. So I have this all set up right here for us. I can get rid of some of this boilerplate code and then just paste in our create table that we just set up. So there we go. Do I get some IntelliSense here? Yes, I do. So I have our pets. DynamoDB table, we're passing in this, which refers to our current stack. And then we're gonna call this simply pets DB table. Nothing too crazy. Now this is all fun, but this is only the DynamoDB side of things. So let's create the AppSync service itself. And then in the next video, we'll create all of the resolvers because there's some fun, cool stuff that I wanna show you specifically in that one. What I'm gonna do is open up this side panel, come up to here for lib, and then we can create a new file. This file is actually gonna be called, not inside of our tables, inside of our lib directory. And we're gonna say it's API slash, and then I'll say appsync.ts. 
Just if I paste in some boilerplate, we can go ahead and see what's going on here. We have some import statements. We have the authorization type. Essentially, how are we going to protect this API? One of the things that's different about AppSync is that everything is protected. Even if it's as simple as a public API key, everything has to be protected at some level. We have code. We're going to be talking about that shortly. Definition, which is basically where is our schema located? We'll create that in a second. And then we have the field log level, meaning as you're making queries, what do you want us to log? Because we can log everything or we can log just a few things. Function runtime, VTL or JavaScript. Of course, we're going to be using JavaScript and then the base GraphQL API class itself. Pretty cool. We are bringing it down with DB. We need that for our props because of these AppSync props, we're going to be passing in the DB table in addition to the name of the AppSync API. When it comes down here, we follow that same convention, right, folks? We have this create AppSync API function, and this takes in this, it takes in our props, and then here we are essentially creating our GraphQL API. Doesn't take too much. It's, yo, where is the schema located? In addition, give me a name. How are you going to authorize me? And then how are we going to be logging things? And do you want X-Ray enabled to do some additional logging? Now, for AppSync to talk to another, or, or for AppSync to gather data, it needs a data source. It needs to know where it's gathering it from. So that's where that pets table comes into play. Now, it looks like I am missing a return statement real quick. So let me get this in here. And then I think I just need one of those. Save that. So we have AppSync and then we have our data source. Our data source is going to be done with DB. I was like, cool. Now, we still don't know how we're updating, creating, deleting, et cetera, from here. Those aren't listed. This is just our API. And it's currently expecting some kind of schema located at this path. So with our API in place, let's go ahead and create our schema. And I'll show you what that looks like in case you need a little refresher on GraphQL. So we're going to create a new file. This is going to be located over in GraphQL slash, and then we'll just say schema.graphql. And then we'll paste this in. Now, in terms of what this looks like and the operations that we're going to have, we have the ability to query a pet. And of this query type, we have two operations. We have the ability to get a single pet, which returns a type of pet, given that we pass in the pet ID right here. Then we have the ability to list pets. Okay. And listing pets returns an array of pets. Cool. And then same thing with mutation. You can piece that together. Create, update, and delete. The cool thing is that creating a pet, they take in this special input type. So when it comes to creating a pet, you can create a pet with an ID, a name, and a type. When you update it, you have essentially the same thing, except the ID is required, which makes sense, right? Because you're updating a pet, so you have to pass in the ID of the pet that you're trying to update. But when you create one, you can optionally pass in an ID, but it's not required. And that's what that exclamation mark is meaning right there. I think this is pretty much it in terms of project setup. We have our API, we have DynamoDB set up. Note what we don't have. We don't have five different Lambda functions all being created. We're going to go straight to the source here, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to actually try and deploy this and we'll see just what happens. Okay, so I have this set up and let's go with a simple MPX. Am I in my backend directory? I should probably do that first. Cool. MPX, AWS, CDK, and deploy. And then as some of you know already, my profile is going to be focus, otter, and then my sandbox environment. Now for later videos, I'm actually going to copy this and I'll just add this to, as a deploy step. So I can do something like NPM run deploy. That way you don't have to see me type all of that out. Real quick, I actually had to cancel that deployment after it already succeeded because it was fast. And the reason why it was so fast was because all I did was create the DynamoDB table I didn't pass this in. So let's go ahead and get that in here. We have it called pets API. We're passing it our DynamoDB table. You can see pets table referencing this right here. And now let's go ahead and deploy. We should be getting our AppSync API. Okay, this looks a lot better where we have AppSync talking to DynamoDB. And it's like, yo, we need basically some permissions because we're going to be doing some stuff here. Looks great to me. So I'm going to say yes. And then now we should be getting both of our services connected and deployed within the AWS console. All right, we went ahead and got that taken care of. Looks like it took 52 seconds to deploy both the table, which had no changes, and then the AppSync API, which was brand new. So let's head over to the AWS console and let's see if we have our API here. So looking this over, you can see down here, we do have our pets API. Great. 
I'm going to click on that and a couple of things. We have our schema in place, right? This is fine. But over on this side here, we have our mutations, create, update, and delete. But when it comes to actually grabbing that data from DynamoDB or inserting data into DynamoDB, even though we have our pet defined and our queries, et cetera, listed here, none of these have resolvers. So if you're wondering how we're going to get those attached without using a Lambda function and without using something crazy like PTL, check me out in the next video. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't already. That way you can be notified. But that's what we're going to be talking about next in the series. Peace until next time. Have a good one.